Hello everyone, my name is Peter Boza and I'm here on behalf of Vision Analytical to present another short presentation in our Shape Measures instructional series where we look at how particle shape analysis offers solutions to common process problems. Today we'll be talking a bit about particle agglomerates, how to identify them, how to count them or quantify them, and to compare results. So first of all, what are agglomerates and why should we care? When it comes to raw materials that go into final product, in many cases, size of particles is often an important physical property to measure. Ensuring a consistent particle size of raw materials is essential for the flowability, packing, wetting, and many other performance factors of the end product. When measuring particles, we typically look at statistical histograms and some basic statistics. However, in some instances, there will be some outlier particles in the statistics that need to be paid attention to. Particles outside the primary particle size can be in excess of fine particles and can be easily detected using a number weighted distribution. This can be caused by over milling, for example, or it can be large particles that can easily be detected in a volume weighted distribution. In the case of larger particles, their presence may not be important, but in many cases, identifying what they are is very important. For example, in healthcare. Uh, in healthcare, it can be a small presence of large particles in an intravenous fluid that can be a serious health hazard, or it can be a large particle in a pharma tablet that can not have the correct dis dissolution properties or efficacy for the proper therapeutic. Identifying the source can be difficult. It can also be an, an, an initial indication that a process mill is not working correctly. It can also be some contamination, such as the elimination of tubing in a process, or it can be as simple as a bubble that may not be of any importance at all. Regardless of the application, there is a significant amount of attention that's paid to identifying agglomerates in raw materials. So that's going to be our focus today. Because we're gonna focus on them, the question is, how do we usually find them? So if the presence of agglomerates is important to your process, then you're probably using some method to measure particle size in your raw materials. The most common methods for measuring particle size are indirect measurement methods that will not measure the size of a particle, but rather measure some other factor related to particle size and then mathematically generate a size value, assuming that all particles are round or spherical in nature. Probably the most common method to do this is laser diffraction that measures the pattern of light scatter caused by particles using a laser. Laser diffraction is a very power powerful tool and is a very popular tool due to the ease of use and the ability to detect these slight changes in particle populations such as agglomerates. Typically, these size only measurement instruments will give you a particle size distribution along with some statistics, as we mentioned earlier. However, when looking for the presence of those agglomerate particles, one typically looks for these small humps outside the normal distribution. Again, laser diffraction is a very good tool and does a very good job of identifying these, assuming that there is enough of them to represent enough signal for the equipment to see and software to report this hump of agglomerates or, or whatever caused this hump to appear. Okay, so now you found a problem. You found this hump. Now what? Well, it really depends. 
Is it a bubble? If it is a bubble in the water that's causing that hump to appear, you can rerun the sample a few times and see if it goes away. You can try sonicating the sample to see if the bubbles get dispersed. However, you, if you try sonicating the sample, you could be breaking up some real particles. So a little bit of a guessing game. But what if they aren't bubbles? What if they are real particles stuck together, true agglomerates? Uh, maybe if you sonicate them, they will disappear. Um, if they are true agglomerates and you feel that they might be true agglomerates, then what kind of action should you take in your process? Do you have enough evidence to change something in your process so these agglomerates go away uh, to get better dispersion? Maybe they're actually real particles. Maybe they are large particles that are in there that are under milled. For example, maybe your mill is starting to fail. Should you take immediate action now and inspect your mill and shut it down based on this assumption or this guess? What if it's contamination? What if it is something that is delaminating from the tubing? Uh, what course of action should you take at this point? Uh, how is this going to affect your final product? So the question is, what action should you take? So again, you're ready to take action. You need to figure out what to do. There seems, there seems to be a problem. So I come from a manufacturing environment and if something uh, like agglomerates are important to my end product, it is important for me then to identify them early on and take immediate action. Because at the end of the day, looking at a manufacturing uh, process, uh, I realize that time is money. The later that I identify a problem and take action, the more probability of scrap, of contaminated materials, contaminated product. There could even be downtime of, uh, of, of processes and mills, or there could even be a product recall. However, I do understand that there is an urgency to take action. The question is what action should be taken if you don't really know what the source of the outliers are. So the question is, what's next? Well, we don't have time to make assumptions uh, as to what the agglomerates are. So guessing and trying to figure out uh, what they are is, is, is very frustrating. Uh, we need solid evidence so we can rely on the solid evidence to make a decision, not just a hump on a graph. I could be chasing nothing if the hump is a bubble. However, if it is a metal flake or some delaminated tubing, uh, then I should be taking immediate action. If agglomerates are important, we need to identify uh, that they exist. We need to find out what they are and see if this is a trend that's worsening over time. So again, coming from a manufacturing environment, uh, there is a popular tool that we used to use called the plan, do, check, act chart. I've kind of reused this tool here uh, to get uh, my mind around what do we do by identifying these process issues. And I just renamed them to identify, quantify, compare, and act. So step number one is definitely, are there agglomerates? If there are agglomerates, that's that hump in the histogram, we also need to know what they are uh, so I can take immediate action and be accurate as to where to take action. Again, is it a bubble that I can ignore? And can I have some objective evidence to prove that I could ignore it? Uh, is it a contamination uh, issue? Is it an agglomerate? Again, I need to know that information is there and what they are so I could take immediate action fast. Secondly, we need to quantify the problem. Is this a growing problem? Is this one agglomerate in 10,000 particles or is it one agglomerate in 100,000 particles? So that may change my level of urgency. Quantifying the problem puts corrective action into perspective. You need evidence to take the proper level of focused urgency. Thirdly, we need to compare. We need to see if this change or these agglomerates are getting worse over time. Is this something that I should monitor and see how it trends? Or is it something that I need to take immediate action on? All of these three are an absolute requirement needed to take appropriate and accurate action. Okay, so 
That brings us as to why we're here today. Today, we're going to be presenting a new tool that eliminates guessing in the identification and understanding of agglomerates in a sample. This will enable us to know what corrective action to take. The new tool that we're going to be talking about is dynamic image analysis. It's a very complementary method in industry. It uses a camera, a high-speed camera, and a flash to capture these particles in motion as they're suspended in fluid. The high-resolution images are converted to binary images, and that's where the real-time particle uh, data and statistics are calculated. It's a number-based image uh, and a direct measurement, so we get very high-resolution information for the individual particles, such as these agglomerates that we're actually looking for. And again, everything is in real time. All the shape measures are calculated in real time, and thumbnail images are saved for each particle that's analyzed. So here we see a live running sample of uh, dynamic image of our dynamic image analyzer, and uh, being a number based technique, there is no lower limit for detection. Meaning that if there is a rare event such as an agglomerate, it will be captured. As particles appear on the screen, they pass through uh, the flow cell and they are measured with 32 different shape measurements added to the statistical data. Uh, and images are saved. Images are saved of every particle that's measured. So as you can see in this example, there's a few odd round large particles, and those are what we would consider our outliers. Note that the area of the histogram on the dynamic image analyzer is increasing as these large particles show up. This is representative of what a laser diffraction system would show as an agglomerate. So in the next few slides, we will show further information on the identification of these particles in the form of thumbnail images, which are an absolute requirement to ensuring proper corrective action to take. Second in our cycle diagram is to quantify these particles. How many are in your sample as a percent of total? So we know exactly how many there are, but we also can see what percentage of cumulative total that there are. So as mentioned earlier, one particle in 10,000 or 100,000 is gonna be very different. Quantification is important to put corrective action into perspective. You need evidence to take proper level of focused urgency. Statistics allows the user to quantify the exact number of this population of interest and know what percentage of the total it represents. Knowing if the sample population of interest is 1% versus let's say 50% of the total may give more focused urgency to identifying and correcting the problem. Also viewing the area of interest allows the operator to identify what the problem is and where it came from. Besides the typical size histogram to identify the presence of these large particles in your sample, whatever those large particles may be, there are other tools to find rare presence of particles of interest. Here we show a correlation plot. The correlation plot is a tool that enables the easy identification of rare event particles. In the sample shown here, we can correlate the many thousands of particles measured in minutes. And as shown, we can easily identify the presence of rare events. This tool makes them easy to find. In this case, out of 35,000 particles, 514 or just 1.5% were identified as rare event particles or these agglomerates. However, just knowing they are there is not enough to take action to correct the process. Again, are they bubbles? And I don't have to worry about it. Are they agglomerates? Are they delamination of my tubing? Or are they contaminants? We need to know to find and to try to identify what they are. Correlation plots enables the user not only to identify the presence of these particles, but also to show what they are. This is an absolute requirement, once again, to know 
if you're going to take action or not, and what type of action to take. This is an excellent feature of dynamic image analysis. Now, we can use dynamic image analysis to compare samples over time to determine if this is a growing problem. Should, uh, are, the, are the agglomerates increasing over time? Are they decreasing over time? Is it a consistent problem? Are they staying steady over time? Also, if the process changes uh, to address these agglomerates, uh, you have to identify if the process change that you're making is being impacted by this by uh by the change so the only way to do it is to overlay data over time and see if the change that you're making is having a positive impact so what we do is we try to overlay these samples and compare size and shape measures and the presence of these large particles in this video we show the overlaying of three sequential analysis and how the presence of these larger particles are increasing over time this can be a good quality control tool to capture problems early and reduce downtime. Let's do a summary. We have identified that there are some agglomerates present or something that makes up that large peak on a size histogram. We have further identified what they are using dynamic image analysis to show the thumbnail images of all those larger particles. Again, this, this gives us objective evidence to know what corrective action to take, if any at all. We know the level of presence of these large particles by being able to count or quantify these particles and be able to see them all. And we have been able to compare samples over time, run to run, using overlays to quantify if this is a growing problem that requires focus urgency or not. So in conclusion, by having more information, your action plan becomes more accurate and effective. So this proves that dynamic image analysis is a highly useful tool for particle identification that can save users time and money. That's it. I hope this presentation has shown dynamic image analysis uh, does definitely play a key role in ending the guessing game of what agglomerates are in the process. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, we can be reached at particleshape.com. Thank you.